Hey everyone, in this tutorial you're going to learn how to combine physics controls with physics constraints to add detail to your models. I'm going to use little R2 as an example here, a model which you can get from Google 3D Warehouse and import into iClone with 3D Exchange. You'll see that R2 is made up of four sections essentially, the feet, legs, body and head. The feet and legs and head are all subprops of the body. Okay, what I'm going to do first is import in my method of locomotion, the two-wheel L2 structure. I'm using this because it really mimics the way that R2 moves, as you'll see later. What I need to do first is resize it and rotate it so that it's facing the same way as R2. I'll test out the movement first to make sure it's going in the right direction. The next step that I want to take is to attach my R2 unit to the wheel structure. I'll just go up and use the attach function in the modify panel to do this. After this, you'll see right away that I can now move R2, but he's tilting a bit too much. To fix this, I'm going to apply my first constraint in order to limit the rotation of the structure. So first, I'll select my L2 wheels and then press F10 to enter the constraints panel. Once I do, I'm going to apply a generic constraint, which gives me lots of options for restricting different movement and rotation. I'm going to set all of my movements to free here, only I'm going to limit the rotation on the Y axis, which, as you can see as I switch to the local axis, is the axis which the two-wheel structure rotates along. Let's limit this to something small like 5 degrees on either side. I'll leave the Z rotation locked for now, as I'm not interested in turning yet. You can see the results now look a little bit better with less tilting. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to enable my body parts with physics, and start work on the constraint hierarchy. I'll start with the feet first. I'll enable those with dynamic physics, choose a self mesh so as not to create any unnecessary collisions, and then apply my first constraint. I like to use generic constraints because they give you freedom to adjust many parameters if something doesn't quite work. I need to make sure my constraint target is the legs, which are next up on the hierarchy. Now basically what I'm doing here is locking all movement and rotation, with the exception of the x-axis, because I want the legs to be able to rotate by themselves apart from the body, which you will see later. Next, I want to move on to the legs, and again apply a dynamic physics state and self-mesh to them as well. The constraint settings will essentially be the same, however here my constraint target will be the R2 body itself. I'll keep the same constraint specifications as with the feet, to ensure a little bit of rotational freedom from the body as well. Now the head movement is going to be very simple, just rotating around a single axis. So all I need for this is a hinge constraint. I'm going to rotate around the z-axis, so I'll enable that. Make sure that your pivot points are in place too, otherwise your rotations will be off. Finally, I'm going to move into the main body of the R2 itself. It's already attached to the two-wheel, but what I'll do to ensure complete compliance with the movement is actually add another constraint here. I'll use a generic constraint and make sure that the two-wheel structure is selected as a target, and then lock all of the movement and rotational values. Okay, so let's try some movement now. You can see that now my movement works pretty well, only the legs are constrained incorrectly. This is because the pivot point is in the wrong place. To fix this, I need to select the subprop itself and then adjust the pivot point in the modify panel to the right. I can use the grid to get it to the top, and then use the edit pivot option to refine the placement so that it's centered on the hinge in the upper part of the leg. After that, I can just close the edit pivot panel, and the pivot position will automatically save. Now you can see that when I move R2 around, the physics momentum will cause his body to rock back and forth. This is enabled by the rotation constraints on each of my legs and feet. 
I can set them to higher or lower values if I want more give in the momentum. If I increase the maximum speed of the L2 wheels, I can see R2 scoot along a little faster. Now you'll notice at the moment that I can't turn R2. This is because I left the Z rotation constraint locked on my two wheel structure. If I go back into my constraint settings for that particular prop again here, I can change that over to free again and try one more time. Now I can make R2 go in tight little circles by using the turn keys. Remember that if you resize the physics structure dummy, it will also affect the turning angle of your mesh. Alright, so let's add in our control for the head here now. I can simply click and drag in my control panel and then double click to add a stepper motor, which I'm going to use to turn R2's head. I'll quickly go in and choose the head as my control target and test it out. You'll see that the head is rotating the wrong way. Luckily this can be fixed easily just by choosing the correct axis in the advanced panel. I'll do that and boost up the unit speed a little as well. If I want the head to automatically retract back to its original position once rotated, I can set the auto retract on, but I'll leave it off for now. Now my R2 is basically complete. I can move him around, change his direction, and rotate his head, all by using the physics controls. This method saves tons of time on animation, not to mention you'll always have a ready to control robot ready for any future projects. You can turn off all of the dummy props again just by pressing Ctrl D and then test out your final product. Now you can control your structure using the physics toolbox just like as if you were playing a video game.